Hey, I'm Bill Howden, the founder of the Sensible Surrogacy Agency, and today we're discussing where is surrogacy legal? What countries are safe, what countries are affordable, and what countries are just downright dangerous? So if you've been following along the video series, then you've heard me talk a lot about different countries with different legal frameworks and different costs. Uh, and today we're gonna go over what are the available countries worldwide and where is the best place to have your surrogacy journey. And when we look at different countries, we really can separate them into a few different categories. You know, the first uh, are countries where surrogacy is regulated and that allow for commercial surrogacy. And after that are countries where surrogacy is legal, but restricted by some local laws. And then there are countries where there's no regulation whatsoever. Uh, and finally, countries where surrogacy has just been outright banned. The first group of countries are those where surrogacy is supported at a high level and where commercial surrogacy is allowed. Uh, and where there is a legal pathway to ensure that the intended parents have sole parental rights. You know, what we're looking for is, uh, is a legal process so that the intended parents can be named as the legal parents on the baby's birth certificate and the surrogate's name would be removed, right? And this really includes just a handful of countries worldwide. So the first country we're looking at is the United States. And the U.S. is considered to be the gold standard for gestational surrogacy worldwide. You know, and in part, that's because of the media hype that's gone around surrogacy in the U.S., you know, especially in Southern California. And maybe you've seen or read about various celebrities having their children born in L.A., which has driven popularity of surrogacy there. You know, but the U.S. is actually a pretty good spot to have surrogacy all across the country. Nearly every U.S. state has a favorable framework towards surrogacy. You know, there's only a handful of states that we would call unfriendly and that wouldn't recognize your surrogacy arrangement. You know, the most legally friendly states in the U.S. would be California, Nevada, Washington State, Maine, New Hampshire, uh, and some others on either coast. You know, these are states that would support what's called a pre-birth order. Now, a pre-birth order uh, is an important part of your surrogacy journey and U.S. law. It's when the baby uh, and the pregnancy reaches the third trimester, you know, there's a court process that declares that the intended parents should be named on the birth certificate and that they are, in fact, the legal parents from the moment of delivery. Now, you compare that to what we would call somewhat friendly states, uh, you know, which would be states like Ohio or Pennsylvania or Arkansas. And these states have post-birth orders or a post-birth legal process that would amend the birth certificate with the names uh, of the intended parents. You know, in these somewhat friendly states, the birth certificate is generally issued with the name of the surrogate, but then a quick legal process, you know, that takes two or three weeks will remove her name and replace it with the names of the intended parents. You know, both, both the pre-birth and post-birth orders are really common and very standard legal processes. So you don't have to worry about being named as the legal parents in the U.S. The legal framework in nearly every state is very explicit and supportive. You know, but of course, every destination has its drawbacks as well. Uh, as well as its benefits. Uh, and the obvious drawback in the U.S. is, you know, that it's expensive. Right now, a typical program in the U.S. is going to start, well, on the low end of about $140,000 and go up to $160,000, $170,000 or more, you know. And that is obviously a huge investment. And for a lot of intended parents, it makes the U.S. just not very viable. What I'd like to say is if you're considering surrogacy and you have to struggle to afford a program in the U.S., then chances are you can't really afford a program in the U.S. 
Because one of the problems with the U.S. is not just that it's expensive, but the costs are generally difficult to predict. You know, the American medical system and, is, and the privatized health insurance system are quite complicated, uh, and costs are going to vary from state to state and month to month. You know, the most legally supported place to have your surrogacy journey is actually not in the U.S., like you might think, but it's in Eastern Europe, uh, and specifically in Ukraine. You know, now it's uh, spring of 2023 when I'm recording this video, uh, and there is an active military conflict going on in Ukraine now. So I don't promote Ukraine as a surrogacy destination. But before the war, and God willing, once peace is restored in the region, you know, Ukraine was unique in its support for surrogacy. Of all the countries around the world, Ukraine had explicit surrogacy laws that support commercial surrogacy. And unlike the US, the surrogate never appears on the birth certificate, uh, and the baby is the legal child of the intended parents from the moment of conception. You know, there's no court process required. You know, you remember that in California, we need to have a pre-birth order sometime in the middle of the pregnancy. But that's not the case in Ukraine. In Ukraine, if you have a properly executed surrogacy contract, you know, and you meet the country's other bureaucratic requirements, then the baby is considered the legal child of the intended parents. And that makes Ukraine very unique worldwide. Ukraine is also quite affordable. Uh, programs there are going to start around $50,000, $55,000, which is about a third of what the U.S. costs. And there are also unique programs uh, in Ukraine that are quite affordable, including you know, guarantee programs or other special packages and special concierge services. The downside of Ukraine is that there are bureaucratic restrictions. You know, Ukraine and other countries in the region restrict surrogacy only to heterosexual married couples and couples who have a medical need for surrogacy. So to start a program in Ukraine, you need to provide a copy of your marriage certificate. You need to provide a letter from your doctor or medical records that show that you're unable to carry the pregnancy yourself uh, and that you have a letter from the doctor that recommends surrogacy. Now, a new addition to the list of surrogacy friendly destinations would be Mexico. Now, I've spent years telling clients to stay away from unregulated destinations like Mexico, but, but that changed dramatically in late 2021 when the Mexican Supreme Court ruled that surrogacy is a protected medical procedure. And you can read all about the new legal framework in Mexico uh, in the surrogacy guide, uh, or we'll have a recent video on Mexico. But essentially, the court ruled that everyone should have equal access to the medical technology to form a family. Uh, and so surrogacy in Mexico was legalized for all individuals, you know, gay, straight, married, single, foreign, domestic. Uh, and the Supreme Court went even further, uh, and they ruled that the questions of the baby's parentage is not actually determined by biology or genetics, but by what they called procreational will essentially granting the intended parents the status of legal parents if they have a properly executed surrogacy contract that shows they had the initial desire to form the family uh, and that the surrogate was just providing the incubator, so to speak. So in short, Mexico's new legal framework is a lot like California. With a surrogacy contract, you can get a pre-birth order during the pregnancy and the birth certificate is then issued with the names of the intended parents and the surrogate is never shown at all. So in short, Mexico's new legal framework is a lot like California. You know, with a surrogacy contract, you can get a pre-birth order during the pregnancy uh, and the birth certificate would then be issued with the names of the intended parents and the surrogate is never shown at all. Now, of course, every surrogacy destination has its drawbacks and like the US, Surrogacy in Mexico is regulated state by state, so not all programs across the country have the same supportive legal framework. So check with a local lawyer about getting that pre-birth order in Mexico. It may not be possible everywhere in the country. Now, surrogacy in Mexico is also relatively affordable. You know, a standard program will run about $60,000, uh, and a guarantee program you know, with unlimited IVF cycles and embryo transfers will be around $70,000. And the costs are even lower if you bring your own embryos. 
but beware of the exasperatingly slow application process to import embryos into Mexico. Uh, it could easily take six, nine, 12 months or more to receive a permit to bring embryos or oocytes or gametes into the country. And the process is opaque and it seems like it takes forever. You know, like the US, Mexico also has no national health service. So make sure you get private medical insurance for both the surrogate and the baby. The second group of countries are countries where there is a legal framework, but there are restrictions against commercial surrogacy and only allow altruistic surrogacy. You know, the classic example is Canada. Canada, which had been a popular surrogacy destination for years, now has very strict altruistic surrogacy laws. You know, the regulations there were amended in 2018, and as a result, it's technically illegal to pay your surrogate anything other than reimbursements for her out-of-pocket expenses. Surrogates need to show receipts, which completely removes any financial incentive to become a surrogate, and as a result, it's become painfully slow to find a surrogate in Canada. You know, and I've had parents who have come to me after waiting years for a surrogate and have finally decided to abandon the process in Canada and move their program to a different country. You know, more restrictive, all commercial activity surrounding your surrogate is also prohibited. So technically, you're not allowed to advertise for a surrogate, not allowed to hire someone to manage her, not allowed to go out and find her and compensate her, uh, find somebody to compensate her or, or recruit her. Um, these are all things that you are supposed to be doing yourself, directly with your surrogate. Now, that doesn't mean that these services aren't available. Uh, and there's sort of a cottage industry in Canada that has popped up that provides those services surreptitiously. But technically, those are all illegal. If you wanted to pursue surrogacy in Canada, you know, there are some benefits. The legal framework follows the post-birth order process, like in some U.S. states. And the surrogate's name is on the birth certificate when the baby's born, but is quickly replaced with the names of the intended parents after the baby is born. Um, the altruistic surrogacy contract is supported in Canada, and it's somewhat cheaper than you would find in the U.S. A typical surrogacy program in Canada is now probably around $85,000, $90,000. Uh, and that would be for a very inclusive program that includes your egg donor and everything else that you may need along your journey. Now, surrogacy in Colombia is relatively new to the world stage, although it's been available locally since 2009 when a court decision established validity of surrogacy contracts. You know, since then, surrogacy has become more popular in Colombia, especially among same-sex couples. Surprising to many, Colombia has one of the world's best medical systems. The WHO ranks Colombia 22nd worldwide in terms of the quality of medical care there. You know, and that puts Colombia right next to Sweden uh, and well ahead of the US or Canada in terms of the quality of medical services. The country also has fully comprehensive national health service, so you don't need to worry about medical insurance for your surrogate or for the baby. Uh, and if there are any complications during the pregnancy or the delivery, the government will provide care without any cost to the intended parents. And Columbia has a very progressive society, including gay marriage, gay adoption, and anti-discrimination legislation at all levels of the government. You know, so surrogacy uh, is available in Colombia for all couples, uh, and that's the good side. The downside is that the legal framework in Colombia is not quite as explicit as it is, for example, in Mexico. You know, the legal framework is supplied by a constitutional court decision in 2009, which upholds the validity and enforceability of surrogacy contracts. But Colombia has no explicit laws regarding surrogacy. Uh, and in the absence of that law, standard family law means that the surrogate mother's name, right, the birth mother, is still put on the birth certificate when the baby is born. Now, there is a legal process to have the surrogate's name removed, but it's a lengthy step and probably something that will happen once you get back home with the baby. You know, but that post-birth process uh, is the biggest downside in Colombia. Otherwise, pricing in Colombia is really affordable. It's about $60,000, $65,000 for a standard surrogacy program, up to about $70,000, $75,000 for a guarantee program. 
Greece is possible for foreign couples since 2014 when a law was passed allowing foreign couples to pursue surrogacy there if the surrogate mother is a Greek citizen. Now the law is generally similar to what we've seen in the rest of Eastern Europe. You need to be a heterosexual married couple or at least a couple in a recognized civil union under Greek law. In an odd twist of legality, single women are allowed to do surrogacy there, but not single men and not gay male couples. The other requirements are that the surrogacy agreement has to be altruistic, that there needs to be a medical need, so medical records need to be provided along with your surrogacy contract, uh, and all of that needs to be submitted to a local court before your surrogacy program can begin. A judge has to review your surrogacy contract and approve the surrogacy journey, uh, and that's typically just a formality, but it can add a few months to the total time of your surrogacy journey. You know, programs in Greece are pretty reliable and they have the added benefit of being in the EU. So if you're an EU citizen uh, and your baby is going to be born in Greece, you have free movement throughout the rest of Europe without the need for complicated immigration procedures and bureaucracy. Now, programs in Greece are not cheap. Uh, they are, they're more expensive than what you would find in the rest of Eastern Europe. Right now, a typical program in Greece is going for about 90, 95,000 US dollars. Now, you may have read about the possibility of surrogacy in some other less developed countries. You know, and if you search on Google, you'll find several unregulated destinations. Um, unregulated means that there's no legal framework in that country and that your surrogacy contract is really just going to be treated nothing more than like a handshake between you and your surrogate. And that means that she can basically change the terms of the surrogacy agreement at her whim. You know, she can apply for custody rights, she can apply for parental rights or parental support, uh, and there's really not a lot that you can do about it other than to sue her in civil court or in family court where you really don't have a lot of benefits. You know, but that possibility is actually not the real issue with unregulated surrogacy. The real problem uh, is that in the lack of any legal framework, in the absence of any explicit law, the government's attitude towards surrogacy and their treatment of surrogacy is really just a political issue. You know, this is what we've seen in countries like Cambodia and Thailand, where one day surrogacy was a legal, viable fertility treatment, uh, and then following a sudden media scandal, the government changed its treatment uh, and made surrogacy, changed it from a medical practice to human trafficking. And what we saw in those countries was in a matter of days, uh, surrogates became afraid that they were going to be arrested, uh, parents were, going, were being fined, surrogacy agents were being put into prison, and all of that happened without any due process or any legislative ruling. Uh, simply because there is no law, the government can change how it treats surrogacy on a whim. And that is why, in general, we advise couples to stay out of unregulated unregulated surrogacy destinations, and that would include places like Guatemala, Cyprus, Kenya, and, and others. And the final group of countries that you may have heard about that were popular destinations in the past, and maybe they're still out there on Google somewhere as being viable destinations. These would be places like surrogacy in India, Nepal, Thailand, Cambodia. You know, these were all possible destinations some years ago. But let me assure you, each of these countries has passed or is in the process of passing legislation that will make surrogacy completely illegal. And in some of these countries, there are stiff fines for intended parents. You know, there are prison sentences, possibly for surrogate mothers or for agents that are working there. So in general, if you're thinking about surrogacy or you've read about surrogacy in one or more of these destinations, you should look elsewhere. Now, if you have any questions about any of the destinations that I've talked about, you can get more detail in the surrogacy guide on our website at sensiblesurrogacy.com. And you can always send us a message and ask for our advice or contact uh, a consultant by sending a note to info at sensiblesurrogacy.com. And one of our consultants will be available to answer your questions. You know, we also have a variety of uh, videos available on our YouTube channel. And, uh, we'll talk about these countries specifically, um, and we have some upcoming webinars that we'll talk in greater detail about a lot of what we've covered today. 
So I hope to see you in one of those.